Hello everyone, we will continue the classical report and in the previous videos, we took a requirement and in that requirement, our output is from two tables. One is order header table and another is order item table. We did the step-by-step -step code. Firstly, we declared a select option for order number because we want multiple inputs of order number. We declared two structure types, two internal table and two work areas. Depends upon order header and order item tables. After that, we have written the first open SQL query to fetch data from header table. Then we have written second open SQL query to fetch data from order item table. Now our data, our values are in two internal tables. One is LT underscore data. One is LT underscore data one. Now what we will do, we'll firstly see how many columns are required in the output. Our output has six columns. Four columns are from header table. Two columns are from item table. Four columns data from header table. Two columns data from item table. Total six columns in the output. It means if we require six columns in the output, it means we require a internal table of six columns. If we require an internal table of six columns, it means firstly we will require a structure type of how many column? Six column. So firstly, we will declare an internal table of six columns. Then we will proceed further. You all know if I want to create a structure type, the keyword is types. Begin off. I will write suppose LTY underscore final. Suppose my name of the structure type is LTY underscore final. Four columns are from header. So I'll simply copy. Two columns are from item. Order item number and item cost. And now and I will end this particular structure. So my final structure of six columns is ready. Now I will declare internal table and work areas. I will copy and I will paste. LT underscore final type table of LTY underscore final. LWA underscore final type LTY underscore final. I'll check the syntax and activate up to this level. So my internal table of six columns is ready. And this will be our output internal table. This will be the output internal table. Now your data is in how many internal table? Two internal table. One is LT data and one is LT data one. From these two internal tables, you need to or we need to fill this final internal table because ultimately this internal table has six columns. That data of four columns, we will pass from this internal table. Data of two columns, we will pass from this internal table and we will fill which internal table? LT underscore final, which has six columns. Now, same to same process. We will firstly pass that data to final work area. From the final work area, we will pass to final internal table. This is what we know from the starting itself. One by one, we need to pass to the work area. From the work area, we will pass to the internal table. 
and you all know very well whenever we want to insert that data at the last of the internal table we have a internal table operation append we put so much stress previously on the append internal table operation the purpose of append is to insert that data at the last of the internal table so from this two internal table we will fill this final internal table and we will use which particular internal table operation we will use append so firstly i will put a loop on the first internal table we all know one by one so i will firstly put a loop on first internal table what is first internal table lt underscore data now i will put the name of first work area dot it means line has been ended for every loop there is a end loop i will apply pretty printer so i put a loop on the first internal table so one by one record will go to work area now this is first internal table now we have second internal table also how we will go for second internal table and this is the most most important point because many time people will ask many time people will confuse they need to go for read table or they need to go for loop now suppose we will understand by example this is our data this is our data suppose this is first internal table this internal table has three records order number 1 order number 2 order number 3 suppose first internal table has three records now second internal table has eight records for order number 1 three records for order number 2 two records for order number 3 again three records now we put a loop on to this internal table on to this internal table we put a loop so records will read one by one now we will come on to this internal table now the question comes we need to apply a loop on the second internal table or can we go for read table statement we cannot go for read table in this particular scenario why why we cannot go for read table but read table is you all know read table always always read the first matching record now just understand what will happen in that case suppose for order number 1 it will read this first matching record where is the first matching record of order number 1 this is the first matching record so read table will read the first matching record now the question comes what will happen to these two two records it will not come in the output now for order number 2 it will read the first matching record now what will happen to this record it will not come in the output now for order number 3 we have how many matching record three matching record but read table will read the first matching record this one only so these two records will not come in the output so output will come only with three records this record this record and this record only now customer will say okay yes there is a data loss in the output i want a output of eight records but only three records are coming in the output because you used read table read table is returning the first matching record it is returning the first it is reading the first matching record so definitely we cannot go for read table in this scenario compulsory we need to apply a loop on the second internal table now many time people think nested loop affects the performance a lot yes nested loops affect the performance but we have a solution for the same in the future when we cover the topic best performance practices at that time we cover the topic parallel cursor whenever you are going for nested loops we at that time we will apply parallel cursor to improve the performance but that is true we should always avoid loops if possible
बट इन अवर करंट सीनेरियो वी कैन नॉट एवॉइड नेस्टेड लूप्स बिकॉज फॉर वन रिकॉर्ड वी हैव मल्टीपल रिकॉर्ड इन द सेकेंड इंटरनल टेबल so we cannot go for read table compulsory compulsory we need to apply a loop on the second internal table also so in this scenario nested loop is compulsory but we can have to improve the performance so we will apply parallel cursor in the future we will learn the parallel cursor so but i will do i will apply a loop on second internal table also loop at second internal table into second per area this was the most important point you should go for read table or you should go for loop so loop at second internal table into second per area now what is the where condition order number is equal to first work area order number for every loop there is a end loop so we have nested loops now we applied a loop on second internal table also but what is the where condition for second internal table first work area order number is the where condition to read the where condition for this particular loop you all know values always pass from right to left so whatever the order number will come into first work area suppose for order number 1 order number 1 is the input for this particular internal table then order number 2 is the input for this internal table then order number 3 is the input for this internal table because we all know order number is common between both the tables once we see in the debugging mode you will get more more clarity how one by one the order number will come in the work area and how we will go for the matching records in this internal table now now we put a loop on both the internal tables yes we are reading the records one by one from this internal table but we need to fill final internal table yes we need to fill this final internal table lt underscore final so how we will fill one by one we will pass that data to work area from the work area we will pass to final internal table so what is final work area lwa final what is first column o n no it is coming from which work area first work area four columns from first two columns from second now i will go for second order date a good programmer always knows the shortcut also so you can put control d control d will duplicate a line it will save your efforts suppose i am going for control d control d control d control d now i will simply change the name say good programmer is one who knows the shortcuts also control plus d d duplicate a line now what is third column payment mode now what is next one currency this is your payment mode this is our currency and this is our order item number and this is our item cost this is our order item number and this is our item cost last two order item number and item cost is from second work area first four are from first internal table rest two are from second internal table so one by one record is going to final work area how it will go to internal table using append internal table operation append what is final work area lw a final 2 what is the name of final internal table lt underscore final i will apply pretty printer 
you can see proper indentation happened. Now I will clear the work area. In the previous videos, we covered whenever you are going for append statement, always make a practice to clear the work area. I will check the syntax and I will activate. Now from these two internal tables, we filled the final internal table. And what is the name of final internal table? LT underscore final. Now we will simply, simply display using this final internal table. So I will apply a loop on final internal table into final work area. Every loop, there is a end loop. And you all know in classical reports, we always display the output using write state. Right. What is work area? LWA final first column. Order number. Now, just see the sequence. What the sequence is? Firstly, you require order number. Then you require order item number. Order item number. <coughs> now, what is third one? Order date. Now, what is fourth one? Payment mode. Now, what is next one? Item cost. What is next one? Currency. I will check the syntax. While displaying, yes, you can change the sequence because while displaying, it is in our hands how you want to display. So what is the summary of the video? In this video, we studied so many important things. We simply merge the data of two internal table into one final internal table. One by one, we pass that data to final work area. From the final work area, we pass that data to final internal table using append statement. Now, here we need to compulsory go for nested loops. Why nested loops? Because for one order number, we have multiple records in the second internal table. You cannot go for read table because read table will result into a data loss here because read table always read the only the first matching record. We put merge the data of two internal table into final internal table and we display the data. In the next video, we will understand this full into the debugging mode and we will check the output in the next video. That's it in this video. Thank you.